Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to concentrate on the thunderstorm risk that we could be seeing through Sunday into Monday and Tuesday as well. Now we have various yellow warnings in force for Sunday and Tuesday and we'll have a look at various shorter range models looking at Cape charts, looking at the precipitation charts as well, looking at the risk. Now we've got a very hot air mass over the top of us at the moment and we've got low pressure bumping in to that very hot air mass developing over the top of us and that is a recipe for heavy showers and thunderstorms and it looks like there could be some quite severe systems out there severe storms i've already had a quick run through these models and it really looks one of the most severe outbreaks we have seen this year so far or at least on the charts it looks that severe in terms of cape and widespread precipitation as well so make sure you stay tuned for this video as we'll have a look at those areas of risk and it does look likely widespread risk not just a small area down in the southeast or across wales or scotland it looks like a wide risk of thunderstorms over the next sort of five days or so so we do have yellow thunderstorm warnings in force and we will first look at those and then we'll have a look as i said at the various models so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in description so you can see we have a yellow thunderstorm warning in force for Scotland and Northern Ireland, pretty much the whole of Scotland, apart from a few northwestern areas, and for the whole of Northern Ireland from Sunday at midday until 6am on Monday. Well, some places will stay dry, hit and miss thunderstorms will likely develop Sunday and Sunday night and may bring disruption in places. If you have a look at the further details during Sunday afternoon, cloudy conditions and areas of rain are expected to develop across parts of Northern Ireland and Scotland. A few places seem likely to see heavy downpours and thunderstorms, which could bring up to around 50 millimetres of rain falling in two to three hours, leading to some disruption. These may last through the night in places. Hail and frequent lightning are potential hazards as well. High impact and low likelihood at the moment because there is still a lot of uncertainty with it and it is going to be hit and miss not all areas within this warning zone are going to be seeing the severe southern storms but in sunday this looks likely the highest risk we also have widespread storms risk into monday as well now we have that thunderstorm warning across scotland but we also have a more widespread warning across all of Wales, western half of England, into parts of Scotland as well, from 6am on Monday until midnight on Monday. As again, uh, it says, well, some places may stay dry, thunderstorms are likely to develop during Monday, bringing locally heavy rain and potential disruption. Again, looking at the further details, while some places will avoid them, thunderstorms are likely to develop increasingly widely as we go through Monday. Storms will probably be underway for Northern Ireland parts of Scotland by early Monday. Of course, we've got those storms on Sunday still there, before also developing across parts of England and Wales, by late morning and into the afternoon. Storms should begin to ease from the west later, very locally 20 to 30 millimetres of rain is possible in an hour, and up to around 50 millimetres in three to six hours. Hail and fruit and lightning are possible. Again, very high impact, but low likelihood again. Some areas here are not going to be seeing those severe storms. Others could see a lot of rain. Now I know I've got plenty of viewers in the east, in the London area, East Anglia, South East England, thinking the only area really in the British Isles here, or at least the United Kingdom, sorry, because Republic of Ireland are not covered in these warnings, but they will be seeing thunderstorms, I'll show you of that. Eastern half are not seeing any storms, and these are the areas that need the precipitation. It does look likely these areas will see showers and storms, but not likely on Sunday. Lower likelihood on Monday but a quite a high chance on Tuesday, as we'll see with the various models in a minute. That risk comes into force on Tuesday, so I don't think the Met Office have put a warning out for that yet, because it is too far in advance. We could see it put out either today or tomorrow. Uh, I am recording this slightly in advance, so perhaps it will come out um, after I have recorded this. But we'll just have to see exactly what happens. But at the time of recording this, we've not got a warning there yet, but we could be seeing one put in force for uh, for Tuesday uh, again, um, but it is, as I said, five days in advance, so still we'll have to see what happens with that. Now, if we do start on the UKV, have a look at the precipitation, uh, and we'll also have a look at the temperatures as well. If we do start on the temperatures briefly, you can see today's temperatures 
Um, you can see again widely into the mid-30s, widely 33 to 35, so you still have intense heat around, even while we're talking about severe thunderstorms, but it's this heat that's fueling it. And you can see as we head through to Sunday afternoon, still widely into the mid-30s for those areas avoiding those thunderstorms, because Northern Ireland, parts of Republic Island and Scotland, back down into the high teens, the low 20s as that storm risk increases. And into Monday, those temperatures are much lower, widely, still perhaps 30 degrees in the far east and the south where we avoid those storms again, but areas to the west and the north where we have widespread thunderstorm risk, it will be a lot cooler. And that is similar to Tuesday, much more widely cooler, perhaps still 27 degrees in the far southeast. So we still have a very warm air mass. We do have a look at those upper air temperatures. Still very warm air mass hanging on there down into the low teens, but much cooler air is spreading in and it is fueling that storm risk. Now if we do have a look at the precipitation, that's what everyone is looking at today, looking at that thunderstorm risk. You can see as we head into Sunday, showers start to break out through the early hours and become more widespread across northern and western areas so through Sunday afternoon. Quite severe, some storms there, but nothing too crazy at this stage. Through Sunday night into Monday, that's where more widespread risk comes in. Through Monday afternoon, quite severe thunderstorms start to break out. Initially pop-up storms, but they could come into bands uh, and through Monday night again into southwestern areas could see quite severe outbreaks there all these reds showing torrential rain and thunderstorms and as we head into Tuesday that shift uh, focuses further eastwards as well as I said those areas in the east who want storms and need storms you can see by this chart through uh, Tuesday at midday severe storms breaking out widely again I doubt it will play out exactly like this because this looks like a very severe chart but you couldn't rule it out. Um, we have seen consistent signal over the last few days for this sort of pattern through Monday and Tuesday, widespread storm risk. But we'll just have to see, this would produce a lot of precipitation. I would expect a widespread yellow warning and you couldn't even rule out a local amber warning and force that as well. And eventually these storms all form into a multi-celled system could give some very persistent rain across the Midlands and Northern England. Hopefully we see that linger in the South and the East as well as we do want that sort of prolonged rain which would alleviate some of the drought conditions because as I said in yesterday's video thunderstorms are good they're better than nothing for precipitation but because of the intense um, nature of the precipitation the rainfall rates it does produce a lot of runoff and it doesn't really soak the ground we need more light to pers uh, and moderate persistent rain to really saturate the ground and feed and water all the plants um, uh, and sort of create less uh, drought conditions we have at the moment. Thunderstorms will help, it will fill reservoirs up, it will fill rivers up, it will help nature to a certain extent, but because of the intensity, as I said, it will produce a lot of runoff and we could actually start to see issues with flooding, can you believe? Just because with the ground as hard as it is now, it almost acts as concrete and can sort of just pull the water above the surface and takes much, much longer for it to move through the soil. So we'll have to see how it does play out. Uh, but at this stage, you could be seeing quite a lot of rain through Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, if we could go over to Meteo Seal and have a look at the WRF. Now, it only runs up to 72 hours, so we can't see much beyond the early hours of Monday. But, um, well, as I'm recording this, but we will be able to see that there is quite a lot of significant cape brewing. So if you do start on that cape, those cape charts, you can see through Sunday... Uh, or through Saturday, nothing too much, but it's as through Saturday afternoon, the cape starts to pick up, but we don't have a lot of trigger at this point. But it's as we head into Saturday and Sunday, we can see significant cape breaking out. Some of the highest cape I've seen in the UK, these purple colours showing amazing amounts of energy within the atmosphere. Um, again, this is most unstable cape, um, so for the most unstable particles in the air, once you've got that lift going off, going up, you can... This is the amount of energy that's available, and you could see why we've got that yellow warning in force for parts of Scotland. Even parts of northern Wales could see severe storm outbreaks there. And that just continues all the way into the early hours of Monday. Widespread capes, so these storms could last a long time, and we start to see some come into the southeast corner as well. So this widespread cape means any showers popping off are likely to be quite intense and quite long-lasting as well. Now, if we do compare that and have a look at the precipitation, see what that shows at the surface, um, in terms of the actual rainfall rates, you can see through Sunday, those storms starting to break out and curling quite severe where they do break out, but nothing too crazy on this WRF, interestingly. interestingly. So a lot of energy available, but not a lot of precipitation breaking out, obviously because that trigger is not there on the WRF run. But I would suspect with the amount of energy in the atmosphere, wherever those showers do take off, they would be very severe. 
So we'll have to see. WF is a little bit more pessimistic for that thunderstorm warning on Sunday. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't run out to Monday and Tuesday at this stage. So we can't have a look at that risk or more widespread risk through Monday and Tuesday at this stage. But after you run over to the R pairs and have a look at the most unstable Cape here as well, you can see as we head through Sunday, you can see Cape breaks out nowhere near as widespread initially as the WRF run does, but still severe Cape across Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland, and it turns more widespread through Monday and Tuesday across many central areas. And wherever these storms break out within this Cape, that's where we could see, again, severe thunderstorms pop off and prolong as well. So a lot of energy around, and you can even see into the south and the east there through Tuesday. And it is something we need to, do need to keep an eye on. Of course, tomorrow we'll have a look at this in more detail as well, looking at this risk again. And we'll, of course, more of these short-range models will have Tuesday and Wednesday in their sights. And we'll be, have a, be able to have a much better look at the potential here. And if we do go over to the raw precipitation charts... And again, have a look at Sunday. You can see those showers and storms breaking out. Could be severe where they do break out. And then through Monday, showers and storms breaking out again locally before turning a bit more widespread through early hours of Tuesday. Again, we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. Just a lot of precipitation around. Very uncertain with the exact intensity as these charts are showing. Just a lot of precipitation. Some cells growing up here or there. But nothing too crazy at this stage. We'll have to see exactly how it does play out. There's a lot of energy there. Just need that trigger. Um, and again, I think it really is going to be hit and miss. It's going to be luck of the draw whether you do see these showers and storms break out. So if we do finish the video by have a look at the icon run, have a look at the most uh, well, the mixed layer cape here. So another value for cape again. Same sort of thing, same sort of energy within the atmosphere. So if you do run through, if we do skip all the way through to Sunday, you can see a massive amount of cape breaks out through the afternoon across Northern England, Scotland, and parts of Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland as well. As we head through Sunday evening into early hours of Monday, cape dies away. But through Monday afternoon, it breaks out widely across central, northern, and even southeastern areas as well through Monday. And it will, uh, and it returns a bit on Tuesday as well. So you can see all these three models, or all four of them really, are showing vastly different precipitation charts and cape charts as well. All different positioning, and it just shows the uncertainty there still is. The models, even at the three or four day time frame, haven't pinpointed the positioning of the low pressure and haven't pinpointed the exact amount of energy and the exact triggers. And if you have a look at the raw precipitation from this, you can see as we head through Sunday, you can see showers and storms breaking out across northern areas. Could be intense where they do break out. We see some quite heavy storms there through early hours of Monday. And a much more widespread shower and thunderstorm risk there through Monday. A lot heavier there from the Arpege. The Arpege definitely on board, similar to the UKV, with a lot more heavy thunderstorm risk. And then again, breaking out widely once again. Perhaps a big area of precipitation into the far southeast as well so i have to see as i said how this does sort of break out but at the moment there is quite a few solutions some showing a lot of energy showing storms breaking out in places but not as widespread as we hope as we want to see precipitation widely others are much more on board with it and are showing widespread heavy persistent storms including this icon run including the UKV, the Arpege and the WRF at this stage, are a little bit more pessimistic with this. So we'll have to see how it does break out. Of course, it could be updated for tomorrow. And of course, those weather warnings will be updated by the Met Office as well. So it is just one of these things. We've got to just stay tuned. Again, the severe storms are only really going to start tomorrow afternoon in the north and west. They do look pretty much well forecasted by the models. They do look likely to break out in terms of showers. Storm risk is going to be local. It can be localised, and we'll just have to see what happens with that. Of course, with storms, most of you will know it is very much now cast situation, where you have to look at the radar and see where they form. Models, of course, try their best at forecasting it, but it is so difficult to forecast where storms pop up, because, of course, 10 miles can be the difference between severe torrential rain, 20, 30 millimetres of rain, and zero, just because of the nature of these storms so we'll have to see how it does break out uh, again still got another couple days until that widespread storm risk comes in through monday and tuesday we'll have to see how it does uh, play out tomorrow in tomorrow's runs but i do think tomorrow will have a very good idea exactly what's going to happen and i think the met office will have all their warnings in force for monday tuesday and even into wednesday as well if we do see that risk continue so anyway thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed make sure you stay safe out there in the heat again today and tomorrow and of course stay safe in that thunderstorm risk as well
well. So as said, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed subscribing to you, and I'll see you again for another video soon.